Joining me for this discussion is broadcast journalist Ifi Oyegbule and social commentator Oladeinde Ario. Good morning, Ifi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Right. I know you, we have been following uh, this issue when it came up and divergent reactions have come up and it has also raised certain issues which I want us to focus on because the matter is being investigated. Several issues have been raised up from parenting, the abuse of drugs, so many social issues and I want us to begin from what issues have sprung up that strikes us the most that we think should be addressed stemming from this issue? Let me begin with you, Ify. Um, So much has actually come up, as you, as, you, as you rightly said now. But I think also as we try to discuss this in the public domain on TV, radio, social media, we need to bear in mind what it is that the family of the Absolutely. later tagger has actually said that there's a lot of misconception mm. outside there, you know, regarding their son, their brother, their husband, and all of that. But we also need to understand that so many questions have been left unanswered. Many have asked how it will be that a very uh, young-looking girl, a 21-year-old, how she's able to hold a man down like that. I saw the, the video of the man in, his, in a pool of his own blood. And you wonder how that will happen. But I always say that th there's something that is known between just the two of them, the man who's dead, the young lady who's caught in all of this, and God. Mm -hmm. Except, <laughs> of course, there are people who also know exactly what it is that happened. Now, when you look at some of the things that have come out as a result of uh, this um, very sad story, you find out that there are reports of the girl having an, uh, an ID in her bag that has a photograph uh, without, with a, a, a different name. And you're asking, why would a girl like that have an ID that bears her photograph and a different name? And a foreign number. Yes. And a foreign number. So you, you, you begin to wonder why that will be. There are also videos of her hanging out with very terrible people. Why would a girl like that, you know, be seen hanging out with such persons? There are reports of her having dealings with uh, a security man somewhere yeah. where they had to do some exchanges and all of that. So you wonder when things like this happen, so many other things are dug up, they're brought out to the Absolutely. Floor. And you're, you're asking yourself the question, what happened to parenting? At what point at 21, did they see, lose it? At 21, yes. let me just ask, were you able to do certain things that you see uh, young girls? Let me tell you, let me say right it now. in local parlance, they never born me. <laughs> 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 I can't, you know. I, as I was saying to both of you before we came on, the day I was to sit on a chair to say to my father, this is the man that I'm going to marry, I was shaking. I couldn't even sit on the same chair with the gentleman when I had to present him before my father. But it's not to say that I'm a saint, do you understand? But there's this thing that had been inculcated in you. You had been brought up with it. There's no way you can veer off it. And that's not to say that we're saints when we're all talking about children. Oh, not at all. Now, there's a question of her mother not being with her father again. That's not an excuse. That's mm. the truth. I have seen young ladies who were brought up by just their fathers. Thank God you have one person here in the studio who's bringing up a girl child. So I'm saying that there has to be somewhere where we can pinpoint that this is where this it is went wrong. wrong. Mm. You cannot. I remember years ago, I, was, I, was, I stepped out and my father was sitting down reading his paper as usual. He just raised his face and so I had a short skirt on. <laughs> and he said to me, you're not going to church in that. And I said, Daddy, you no, know, it's not possible for me to go to church in this. I'm not even going to church this Sunday. So what I'm trying to say is, there are fathers who can sniff things from afar. Mm -hmm. How can you say your daughter goes out to smoke whatever she says she smokes and all that? She comes back home and you can't smell it. You can't feel it. You can't see it. Every father can look at a child in the eye and know that there is something wrong. So I think they failed somewhere. And right. we need to trace uh, Because uh, when you look at her age, 21, she didn't just start today. Mm -hmm. Looking at the various reports that have sprung up as a result of this issue. And you are wondering, because we see videos of young ladies abusing substances, drinking, and some of these things. And you are wondering, where are their parents? Right. Where are their... Is it that the society is putting so much pressure 
on young persons to engage in these things or it is that parents have just you know lost that uh, thing that you know we had at the time that it's now springing up all of these issues from the sad point i'll tell you straight away that the most deceptive relationship is between children and their parents really yeah why so not between husband and wife or otherwise i'll, I'll just myself an example right my mother detested night parties so we were i mean don't even mention it one weekend, she was out of town. One of my friends, we in, I was in secondary school, lost his father. And the school said we should visit, right? They didn't say we should go to a night party. But we took the time. We had not been in town at the night party. Now, my friend was just like, you know, he didn't have more, no food not to give us. And I saw one of my mother's close friends at the party. I went to her that we were here. She gave us a bar. The first food at about 9 p.m. Hmm. At about 2 a.m., she gave us rice and uh -huh. we ate. So we left the party at about 5 6. That's um, Saturday, I mean, Sunday morning. My mom came back on Monday. The woman now sent me to my mom with a message. Of course, I dared not deliver the message. Hmm. Now, maybe a week later, they met. Ah, I said, so they didn't tell me anything. I went to pack a night party. Care. My mother got home. My mother was defending me with all the strength in her body. And she got to him. I easily said, hey, Mike, like, I denied easily because I know she will kill me. No two ways to eat. Now, what happened? The woman came to our house and she confronted me. And I was so calm. Mama, maybe you were in a dream or in a trance. Mm. Okay? And that thing went. The woman was weeping. Several years later, after I started working, I was settled. I came home, bought things, because it was worrying me. This time the woman was in our house. I needed to make it up to this woman. So I bought things for her, um, one lace, gilly, and all of that. So, and I told my mom I was wrong. Then, so she took me to that woman to go and confess. This is my own story. Okay? <laughs> now, you can understand where I'm coming from. I was brought up, I was in the choir from primary two. At about, I was barely eight then. And then we grew up like that. But behind our parents, there are a lot of things we did that if they ever got to know, I don't know. They, 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 but despite so that, you must understand that. Now, fear. that as a background, yes. like I told you, mm. it's a very deceptive between parents and children. Now, at our time, we had very limited access to information at the global level. Okay? But today, remember I told you one day that my MBA thesis was on the, the modulus impact of technology. Mm. And I explained how you know, everything technology brought has its own good side and terrible bad side. Unfortunately here, we do not have the capacity to manage access to information of our up and growing children. And that for me is the departure point. Yes, they go to church, they go to mosque, they, they, they are trained, they are groomed, but there's this external peer pressure that encourages them to become defiant. There are videos I saw in the last two weeks that I was shocked. Young girls, 16, 17, 18, smoking uh, all manner of songs and getting high. Some attending parties naked, mm. not wearing anything. Mm. And in the midst of male adults. So we cannot Who can now, serve as their fathers. We can, old, older than their father. Right. Now we cannot. So we now need to be looking at wholesale. such men as enablers. That's yes. the truth. So we cannot now wholesale begin to blame the parents. There are failed. But they, they, play, a major failed they play a major parents. role. I'm All not right. saying no. But out there, the, a lot of factors have combined right. to expose a uh, youth. To a situation where you would never have thought they, you, they would get into. Now, right. coming to T.D. Man's case, it's a bunch with fingers. Mm. It's, it will be very myopic and pedestrian to ever conclude that T.D. Man single-heartedly murdered. Okay, because, before we get to that point, let's quickly take uh, this uh, report from our correspondent, Ivy Kanu, who has been following up developments uh, with regards to that story. With so many conspiracy theories flying all over the social media, TVC News decided to dig deeper into the background of the girl who is in the eye of the storm. 
Now, after the death of Michael Osifo on the 15th of June, uh, Chidima Ujupu was traced to her residence, which is right behind me, on 23rd of June, Wednesday, around 9 p.m., and she was arrested with her guardian, Mr. Ujupu. Though we were allowed access into her Yaba residence, no one was available to speak with us. The case wasn't any different as those living on the same street acknowledged knowing her but refused speaking on camera. Students at the University of Lagos Akuka described Chidima's action as shocking and not reflective of those in the institution. Actually very shocking and it's like unbelievable. It's something you would definitely not think about that it's possible to happen but it just threw like the university community into shock. Yeah, the point we are all students. So that's how, that's the part she chose because they should not blame the school for anything. The school is not. We are all adults. So you are all responsible, or you are all in charge or take responsibility for our, all our actions. There's no justification for what she did, because taking somebody's life is not something that should be justifiable. Whatever she did out there, it's it's like a bad it's it, it's a bad name to the school. Like the reputation of the school is at stake. But we all know that. It, there's no way it will affect the school because it's a personal life and that's nothing to do with the school. The case that happened is a case of bad parenting because if the, if the foundation is, is not well laid out, you know, that's where we have excesses like this. So, and uh, this sends out a, a warning note to parents out there that they should be cautious of their children and the activities they operate on. Our next stop was the crime scene. We are right here in front of the apartment where the mother took in. We are told that between Sunday, when they checked into this apartment, um, Osifo's family were still, family and friends were still able to communicate with him, not until Tuesday stroke Wednesday night when they couldn't reach him. Now we we'll walk in and see, although the police are not allowing us access because it's a crime scene, we'll see the little th details that we can get inside. It's a one-bed short-legged apartment. From the entrance, our camera could see the kitchen, which is enclosed with the room. Blood stains still evident on the bedspread and sheets. The room all scattered. We also noticed a huge chunk of blood cloth on the floor. This seems to be tough case, but security expert Dennis Amak recommended the police for what they have achieved so far and says more can be done. No, Lagos State, they have uh, forensic investigators that were recently trained. Uh -huh. They should go in there, look at the place very, very well, and see whether somebody was trying to wash off evidence that uh, was apparent in doing that room. And then, of course, the position of uh, where the body lies. Where was he? How was he stabbed? Was he stabbed by her? What is a height as considered to his own height? We have to know. And then the angle of strike, we have to know that. So if the angle of strike and the height does not rhyme properly, it will show that there were other people uh, that were in that room doing this particular thing with her. Telephone records, I think uh, they've not looked into that to know the people she has been communicating with, you know, before uh, and after she has been discovered. Uh -huh. So if we know the telephone log and uh, with the help of the service providers, we should be able to know who has been talking to her and stuff like that. Meanwhile, family of the late Michael Osifo released a statement seeking more discreet investigation by the police. They also asked that they be left alone to grieve their son. Meanwhile, our sources say that Mr. Juku, who many believed was Chidima's biological father, is not better guardian. Her name at birth was Chidima Blessing Ebuchu. She's actually the second child of late Mr. Michael Ebuchu and Mrs. Kate Ebuchu, both of Imo State and Abia not from Ababu Aruchukwabia State Abia as Abia being Abia reported Abia in the media. Her biological parents separated in the late 90s and when her father Michael Ebuchu died in 2019, her mother Kate Ebuchu went on to remarry and now bears Kate Dibia. Our sources further revealed that Chidima, on her own volition, made Mr. Ojuku her legal guardian as a way of showing appreciation for re enrolling her in school in 2014, sponsoring her in school, 
training her in fashion design, modeling, executive ushering, and beauty therapy. Mr. Ojuku, we were told, does not intend to abandon her in these trying times. According to information, Michael Ataga had two houses on the island, one in VGC and another in Banana Island. The car which the late Mr. Ataga drove to the apartment is still at the police station. As it stands, only Chidima holds the answer to the many holes in her recent statement when she was paraded by the police. Many are of the view that she may not have acted alone and wants the police to extend their dragnet further to unravel what and why this happened. Ivy Kano, TVC News, Lagos. And indeed, only Chidema holds the answers to the holes uh, in this uh, issue because this report has, you know, just thrown light to a lot of things. That name she was bearing isn't really her name. Real she name. adopted that the man. Uh, the man as her father, hmm. and everyone thought that was her father mm -hmm. from the report our correspondent. And it it's begs a lot of questions. So many issues. She came up with an identity, as you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Mary, Johnson. With a, Mary Johnson, with Mary a different Johnson. name and her and picture. Uh, so it, it begins to get worrying that uh, this issue is more than we think. Yes, so, so much. A lot more will come out of this. Look at the connection now. When her mother left, her father died, why she had to adopt. Now, she adopted the man Someone, to say yeah. this Not the man, man. adopting her. Exactly. She yeah. adopted her before paying her or putting her back in, in school. school. She had to adopt the man. Okay, be my father. And I'm thinking that that man is also a person of interest. They need to look into whatever relationship that exists between them, the father and daughter relationship, find out what's going on. And I like what um, your, your reporter, Ivy Kano, uh, did right here to say, look, um, to speak to the man, the expert there, who said, look, they need to take a look at what has happened, what went wrong, what happened with the phone calls, they need to take, at the phone, take a look at the phone logs, know exactly who she spoke to days before, you know, and when it happened. We need to take a look at all of that. And I also agree with the, with the family to say, look, we, we have to stop this idea of bringing everything to social media, bringing everything in, mm. uh, in the open. Mm. Go yeah. and do the thorough investigation. investigation. Mm. When you now have a full plate of meat, you can now bring it out to say, this is this and that is this that. Is so that you don't come out tomorrow to say, look, we're sorry. We didn't know it wasn't like this. Now, we're hearing she's from Imo, mm. not Arochuku. No, she said state. she was from Imo mm. and mentioned Arochuku and one village that I cannot easily remember. Arochuku she, is... She is, mentioned is, it. Yes, it's not okay. in Imo. You know, so now it's clear that she's from Imo. Some were even saying she's Anambra because of the name Ojuku. And I think we need to stop jumping into conclusions. Mm. Let's okay. always wait until a full investigation yeah, is, is done. conducted on, on and score, the truth is out. Score, yeah. I will not be able to lay the blames at the door of the public. Mm. You know, when a thing like this happens, naturally everybody will show interest. The problem we've had here is the irresponsibility of social media bloggers. They easily want to run with any story. And be the first to break they, it. They, God bless you. They call it breaking news. Mm -hmm. And you are breaking lies. You are breaking untruths. Not even hard truths now. And by doing that, you are causing some families pain. Mm. As much as people are blaming Ataga, and I say, let he who is not guilty cast the first, the first stone. stone. Right? Let, really? the ma let the married man <laughs> really? in today's world. Are you, a, uh, are you uh, encouraging it? That, I that am not. Listen, listen, I'm not encouraging mm. what transpired. But I'm saying right. that for all of us, it's a lesson and it's a call. A call. I say, okay, come back home. Because you may end up with a cheating man and you will pay the price of losing your life and terminating your destiny at whatever point it comes. What I'm saying is, people are they now started throwing base at your target, and I felt too bad because there are a lot of them that I also knew and I knew their lifestyle. And I asked, on what problem are you standing to condemn this guy? Mm. Play side by side. How do you think people, if your own situation should come public, to the open, how do people will see you? We have lost all the humanity so, in us, so, and then we just want to condemn and condemn and condemn. So and nobody, we shouldn't. Say, call what is wrong, wrong. I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying that... We but you have just said it here, that we shouldn't saying, blame the public. The public yeah, will definitely talk, but, but I agree with what you're I saying. Believe, but what I'm saying is, 
it is not as if all of us now are saints. saints. Mm -hmm. But we have this hypocritical tendency, okay, to want to hide before, behind one finger and think we are not seen. If this never happened, nobody would have seen Ataga alive and accused him of dating a, a, a younger, you know, a girl. No, but she's so an adult. No, 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 she's no, an adult. I'm saying, I'm not saying no. So, but at her issues. age, is that what she should get uh, involved I mean, in? That's what I'm saying. The it's margin is wide, please. Yes. Especially when there was no plan to marry. I don't think the, he had the plan to marry. Ah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I then, that's, not what, again, we, that, that's it, not what we should be talking about now. The, no, no. the idea for us now no. is to, um, for those who are alive and still in the same but, business, but yeah, it's only need to in highlighting. Because a man is dead. That's absolutely. somebody's father. That's but someone's husband. husband. That's someone's brother. Yeah, I'm trying to establish trying to, the wise mm -hmm. that people can learn from it. Mm. It's important. We get to that point. You see, because Tidima said Osifo was getting violent. And I, from my professional perspective, it will take a man that has energy or strength in him, power, to get violent. But okay? she mentioned that she they were abusing substances. That, absolutely. But Let that is left for see, the investigators to handle. Whether Osifo was new to the drug or not, it's not even the issue. But for somebody who was a kickboxer, it, it wasn't a weakling, so to say. Hmm. So much that, was he folding his hands while she was stabbing him? He would have responded, I mean, reacted or whatever. But to let you understand that Chidima wasn't acting alone. Mm. I had, think we should let's leave that for let's leave the for, for the investigators <laughs> because let's just um, focus our attention on the issues that this has brought up. Yes, we have seen the that that's uh, the apartment where it happened. Obviously, we could see a struggle because there was a, a tear on the wall, blood stains mm -hmm. everywhere, bottles and all of it there. But uh, the concern is at that age, what should young people? get themselves involved in mm. if they know they are building a future for mm. themselves. Now that you've talked about that, um, um, Veronica, it takes my mind to the gentleman who brought me here this morning. I had to, I decided to come by a cab and I called the cab. When the young man spoke with me, it was such, his voice was kind of thin. I'm like, this is such a very young person. I could hear it in his voice. And when I got downstairs and got into the cab, I saw he was a very little boy. And in my mind, I'm wondering. So we got talking. How old are you? He says to me, he's 24. And he has that sense to say, I need to put a cab on the road, do some jobs, earn some money, and probably pay my way through school. I'm not saying it's going to be like that for everyone. Mm. But I'm thinking that at that age, what should be paramount uh, in the minds of young persons is how they can move from point A to B, you know, pursuing their career and all of that. But I already just talked about this idea of peer pressure. Mm. What kind of phones are you carrying? Where do you want to go? What can you drink? What can you smoke? I saw a photograph But you have a decision. You, you, you have the right to make a decision not to get involved. Yes. I saw a photograph of my niece. Very pretty. Tall, you know. She opened her eyes in my arms when she was born. <laughs> and I saw this picture with smoke all over the place. She wasn't the one smoking. But people were taking what you call shisha all over the place. So I picked up my phone and I called her. And I'm like, what happened here? Mm -hmm. Why were you found oh, in that? a place like this? Mm -hmm. Of course, she knew what would have happened if she was close to me. Mm. No matter how big you are, you can never grow up to, you know, to stand up to me. She knew what would have happened. And she said, Auntie, she gave me an idea of what went. I said, you shouldn't be found in such a place. And I sent those pictures to my sister to say, if you know the language in which you talk to your daughter, please do that. Because I do not want to see this. Again, she's not around. And I'm supposed to be like a dad. That so brings to mind something that understanding how to communicate with your that's, children that's the idea. at this point. That's the idea. Yeah, well, because, Such um, that they can open up to you and you can help them manage this pressure. Yes. You see, from, from, from birth, parents should be determined now to befriend their children. And that is the only way you can get them to talk to you. So many parents are so detached from their children. Because they're it's chasing all, money. It's all about making money, providing for them, holiday abroad, vacation everywhere, and all of that. Not knowing that they need their time more than anything. The presence. You know how it flows, my yes. daughter. Yeah. It's a 247 thing. 
just on Saturday, we see it's home for on holiday. And because it's in the boarding house, we need to review how things have been. I carried her, we went to one restaurant, we sat there, ordered for what she wanted, ordered for mine, and then we started talking. Few things that she said that I didn't like, I noted them now. Which before she would go back to school, I will work on them. Parenting is a two, four, seven, three, six, five thing now. And then it don't just carry that old papa's swagger, which they used on us. It won't work with this one, so mm. eh, eh. my father, the, the moment his car, I mean the, the horn sounded at the beginning of the street. <laughs> you behave, you fall in line. You yeah, fall in line. Not, I'm talking of a man that had 13 wives. All of them will just take care of themselves. But when you mention the children, we will be hiding because you fall he in must line. not find you in yes. any unacceptable or untoward situation. You are in for it. On a Sunday, my father's driver will take all of us to the church because we're in the choir. And who beside your mom if you should look up at the choir stand and not You're find not you? There. Come on. But you see, those methods cannot work anymore. Now. Because change, you know, which affects virtually everything, has changed or not. Mm. Especially the needless and unmanaged, uncontrolled exposure mm. to what they call Western civilization. That's worse in things. Like the young man that you said, mm. it's just one out of very few. Yes. Unfortunately, today, the, cr the craze for instant wealth mm. is so bad that they don't even read in school again. They mm. do what they call sorting. I'm shocked yeah. Veronica. A gentleman hey. met his niece's boyfriend. She was going to introduce him. The, the gentleman introduced himself and said to the guy, uh, when he asked him, so what do you do for a living? He said, I'm a Yahoo boy. Can you imagine? Point blank. Mm. He said it. That look on your face, the guy was shocked. <laughs> and he's like, really? He said, yes, that's what I do. I didn't kill anybody. That's what he said. And I'm like, really? He looked at you in the face with your knees boldly. standing beside boldly and said that to him. So it's kind of crazy. What worked for us those days cannot well, work now. He just yeah. talked about his yes. father. I remember the year that uh, Shino Peter's Afro Juju yeah. you know, was all over the place and all of that. My sister had a party and we all went. Imagine five of us went with her to the party. She took us and all of that. And some of us brought their siblings also. When we got back home, I think we got back home at eight or was it nine? We slept on the staircase. My father locked the door. <laughs> and I could hear my mother by the other side of the door. My mother cried till morning, begging for him to open the door. The man didn't. We were just there on the staircase. And he came out in the morning and opened it. It wasn't that he didn't love us. He was trying to teach you yes. a lesson. But those things cannot work today. There's, there's something I want us to talk about before we go, which is the abuse of substance, which this also brought up. Yesterday, I, I saw a report where it was said that a guy abused, a young guy abused substance, and, you know, he fell from, he said he was going to jump from a story building. That's the after effect of the drugs. And he died. Hmm. And we keep wow. seeing these See. people. He was in school. <laughs> um, and we keep seeing these young children I, abusing I, drugs. Uh, I but I you just talked the about shisha choice. Thing. There is choice. Okay, the shisha thing. I saw it in Dubai some very long years ago. So the first time I saw it in Nigeria, I was like, hey, we are done for. And then you now see girls. Then you see children playing, I mean, smoking shisha without understanding the likely implications and consequences, both in the immediate and, you know, wider ones. And all of this thing for me, border on loss of value, mm. is the bedrock of all the nonsense we are seeing now. We dare not drink growing up. And you see, I saw a video about seven girls. They had Hennessy, Different drinks, so okay, why let's leave the brands so out of it. This one will drink a bit of this, pass it on, take another one, and they were drinking like that, you know, in, 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 in circle. You know, how will it go by the time they would have finished all the contents of the bottles? You know, so you know? for me, we need to reinvent our educational system to start mm. with. Parents, too, they need to be talked to, right. They need to. We grew up as community children. Mm. You misbehave on the street, they deal with you. Everybody, 
<laughs> you don't go home and tell your parents. Well, find out what I'm yes, I, I'm, I'm just thinking that um, we need to continue to create the awareness. People need to understand what will happen, that there are consequences for their actions. Every action. That is the truth. We need to let them understand, if you take this, this is what might happen. I'll quickly share this with you. When quickly. my husband took, he took ill, you know, I, I wouldn't say it was at the point he was going to die. I was all over the place looking for trauma door. I couldn't find it until I went into some kind of interior. When I got there, they thought I was a policewoman. And they said to me, Madam, are you sure you mm. need this thing? <laughs> I had to show them the prescription right. before they went out to get it out for me. So we need to let people understand that there are consequences for, for every action. their actions. And right. people need to understand that whatever you do, you will always get the result of it. And we just hope that the young people of today learn Lessons. and understand that All right. there Before is we everything. No, we, 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 we have run out, out of time. time for everything. Broadcast <laughs> journalist <laughs> Ifi Oyegune. Thank you, social commentator Alade Ndiyariya. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We have to go now. Okay. Thank you so much.